Hello guys, and welcome to the first part in a three-part series of making the Guard.io game in Python. So let's get started. First of all, let's import our stuff. So import pygame. This, we're also going to need random map and time. Then from pygame.locals, we're going to import everything. Then we're going to initialize pygame. Next, we're going to make our screen. Screen size I'm using for this is 1280 by 720, but it doesn't really matter which screen size you use. So 1280 by 720, and I'm going to make my screen resizable. Then we're going to set our max FPS. We're going to set our clock, and we're going to make the window of our game say our game name. So by game that display that set caption guard.io. Next we're gonna set up some variables. So that's gonna be spell count. We're gonna set that to 2000. We're gonna set bot count to 20. We're going to set map size to 2000. We're gonna set our spawn size to 25. We're gonna set the minimum size to spawn our bot set to 25. We're going to set the maximum size to spawn our bots at to 350. We are going to respawn ourselves so we don't run out of cells in the map. But we're not going to respawn our bots. Then we're going to set our player color to red. We're going to set our background color to black. And lastly, we're going to set our text color to white. Now, let's set up some other stuff, such as our font. So it's just going to be pygame.font.font. Font. Font's going to be free sans bold. Dot ttf, size 32. I'm also going to make a copy of that, except bigger, so size 72. I'm going to name that big font. I'm going to set variables for the width and height. So 1280 and 720. I'm going to make a list called cells. A list for all the bots. I'm going to make a boolean called game over. And the rest of the step is for calculating the FPS. So we're going to need the counter. We're going to need the frame rate. We're going to need a start time, and we're going to need a frame rate delay. So how often to update the frame rate. You'll see how this is used later. Now that we've made all our variables, we're going to make the class to make our cells from. So class cell. We're going to make the init function. It's going to have self and five other parameters. Self, X, Y, color, radius, name. Okay. We're going to have self.name is equal to name. Self.radius is equal to radius. Self.color is equal to color. Self.status is equal to random. Random. One, eight. You'll see why that's used when you make the bots. So, self.x position is equal to x. And self.y position is equal to y. So next, I think we have three other methods to make. First method to make is wander. This will make our bots wander randomly. We're going to define that later. Next, we're going to have a collide check function to check if our cells are colliding with anything. That's going to take the player as a parameter. And also, we're going to have a draw function. So self and it's going to take surface as a parameter and I'm going to define the draw function right away so it's going to oh it's also to take x and y so x y now we can it's going to be a circle so pi game dot draw dot circle it's going to draw it on a surface 
I'm going to draw it just that color. The coordinate to draw that. And we have to draw it at its radius. Also, if it's a bot or a player, we want to show its mass. So we're going to do self dot if self dot name is equal to bot or self dot name is equal to player. We are going to put text on the screen at the x and y of the circle. So text is equal to font dot render. We're going to round its radius and convert it to a string. False and we want to draw it as text color. So yeah, that's it for the draw function. Now we're gonna make all our cells and our player and draw them to the screen. So the best way to make two thousand of something is by using a for loop. So we're gonna do for i in range cell count. We're gonna make a new cell. The x is going to be random from negative map size to map size. And our y is going to be the same. Then we want to set our color. So it's going to be also random from 0 to 255. And we need three values for our RGB. So I'm going to do that three times. Then we need our font size. I'm going to use 5 and our name. I'm going to name it cell. Then, lastly, we have to append it to our list. So, cells.append new cell. Now, I'm going to make the player. So, player cell is equal to cell. I'm going to spawn it 0, 0. Player color. Make the radius spawn size. And we're going to name it player and close that parentheses. Next, we're going to make our main game loop. So we're going to start it off with while true. Then we're going to check for events. So for event in pygame.event.get, if the player is trying to exit the game, we're going to quit pygame and exit the system. Next, we want to check our mouse position because that's how our player is going to move. So, if event.type is equal to mouse motion and the game is not over, we're going to set mouse x and mouse y to the position of that. What if the player is not moving the mouse? It's going to throw an error. So we have to prevent that by setting mouse, at, mouse x and mouse y to something else, even if the player is not moving the mouse. I'm going to set it to half our screen size. So width divided by 2. And y is going to be height divided by 2. Next, we want to check for collisions every frame. So if the game is not over, we are going to Check for collisions. Collide check. And pass in player cell. Now we're going to draw all our cells to the screen. So once again, looping through 2000 items is tough, so we're going to use a for loop. So for cell in cells, we're going to draw the cell on the screen at its X position and its Y position. Before we test that, we have to finish up the while loop by updating the screen and taking the clock. So, first we're going to set our width and height to whatever side the screen may be at this point, since you can resize it. So, pygame.display.getSurface.getSize. Then we're going to update the screen. We're going to tick the clock. And we're going to fill the screen with our background color. Before we test this, I've made some syntax errors. So 
what you're going to do is close that and add an equal sign there. So now we should test it. Try that. And boom, we have a lot of multicolored dots on the screen. So, I hope you enjoyed part one of the series. Part two will come out soon. Thank you for watching.